the one where the guy leaves the show obviously shoots <laughs> 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 the one where he's streaming this gold. Mm. <laughs> the shopping cart. Are we going to turn the stage lights up? This is. Uh, oh, it's the one where he's streaming this gold. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the shopping cart. Yeah, we're going to turn the stage lights up. This is. Oh, it's the one where he's streaming this gold. Yeah, so I'm talking smack about Orion the Carver right now. Not cool. The guy's awesome. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, good morning everybody. Um, welcome, welcome. I am Alex and I am the Games Master for this morning, uh, right through until 2 o'clock. Uh, what hour are we on? We are on hour 91 of 250. Um, Going slowly mad. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What are we doing? Who are we? What's going on? Well, this is Adventurers Wanted. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a tabletop role-playing game. Um, for anyone who is new to that idea, basically what it means is the players sat either side of me are playing their own individual unique characters. I, as the games master, will play the rest of the world. I will describe places, people, and things that they encounter. Um, I'll tell them things that happen, and they will tell me how they would like to engage with the world, what they would like to do. Sometimes I will ask them to roll dice. And their success or failure in rolling those dice will determine whether they succeed majestically or fail dismally and often hilariously. Uh, it helps push the story forward. The story so far. All of our characters are crew members aboard a naval research vessel known as the Spirit of the Horizon. On a recent mission, it was unexpectedly and magically transported to a completely new and unknown world. Now the crew have to find out how to get home, whether that be by fighting monsters, exploring islands, finding new allies, or by some other means as yet unknown. Most recently, the crew found themselves in desperate need of the constituent parts to make up gunpowder. They are the only ship on board the entire world that they have met so far that has gunpowder or cannon and their entire stock of gunpowder was stolen and used to create a humongous explosion. They went off in search of information and some of the parts uh, and went into a large clockwork city. Um, after that, they delved beneath the earth uh, into a mine beneath uh, the mountain known as the Silver Peak in search for saltpeter. Uh, there they entered the elemental plane of earth and freed an Afriti, a large fiery genie, from his prison beneath the earth. He thanked them and disappeared. We know not where. Um, they succeeded in finding a large seam of saltpeter and filling up a portable hole, which is a strange magical device which you put on the floor and it turns into a hole and then you can fill it up with anything you want and then you can fold it up again like a, like a handkerchief. Um, and they brought back a large amount of saltpeter. It took them a while. Um, there'd been an earth fall which had blocked their entrance but after a few hours of moving rocks uh, the party had made a way out, back up through the mines, out and back onto the island of the Troquen Caldera. Um, it's, been a, it's been a day or two since that last adventure and our characters are enjoying their time in the cities of the Trocan Caldera uh, and on board their ship. That's where we're going to pick back up. Um, before we do so, I'm going to ask the players on the table to quickly introduce themselves, the name of their character, what their character is, 
and how the other people on board the ship might know them or what they do on board the ship that makes them noticeable. So on my left. I am Isla. I'm playing Noggin, who is a gnome rogue. I'm a ship's dentist, and I collect anything that is shiny, and I also collect teeth. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm playing a character called Wally. Wally is half bird, half man. He is a native of the land they've gone to, and he is a druid, so he does stuff with nature, and uh, he doesn't really know many people yet. He's relatively new because <coughs> his last character died horribly. <laughs> uh, my name is Ian. I am playing Brother Jurgen, who is a cleric of the goddess Lyra, who is a goddess of joy. Although, uh, since they have come to this new place, uh, his god is not there, and some something else has been talking to him, um, and he would quite like to find out who and what that is. Uh, uh, in the meantime, he is kind of on, on board as sort of ship's counsellor slash moving into, moving into ship morale officer. Uh, more on that soon. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so yeah, we start off. It's a nice, pleasant day. Um, the the wind blows in gently from the from the sea. Um, last night was there was a storm on the island, but today has dawned bright and clear. Mm -hmm. um, what what have you been up to over the last few days, Noggin? What what have you? How have you been spending your time? What have you been thinking about? I have been wandering along the beaches, collecting shiny pebbles, and thinking. Yeah, it's okay. I don't have to steal these. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, having a, a lot, lots of thinking about what is morally right now about stealing stuff since Olmoran taught me that stealing is bad. <laughs> so, yeah, big, big thoughts in Noggin's head about that. <laughs> My cleric taught her that stealing was bad, a kleptomaniac, just before he died. <laughs> And it seems to have sunk in horribly. Yeah. <laughs> That's my last character. So, so big thoughts in a, in a small, small. small brain. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, what have you been up to? How have you been spending your oh, time? Oh, you know, getting on a bit. I don't like people, so I have been uh, swimming in the sea quite a lot, taking a lot of animal forms of, like, sharks or octopuses or birds, doing a bit of exploring around the island, getting to know like all the creatures, had a chat with a walrus yesterday, you know, standard druid stuff. Okay, cool. Brother Jürgen, what have you been up to? Um, I've not been out of the ship for a while, uh, so uh, for, for about a week. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, really I've been trying to come to terms with the death of my friend, uh, the, you know, the, my fellow, fellow cleric, uh, Ilmorn, who, who died whilst off ship. He had rescued me when I was close to drowning, and then when he actually drowned, I wasn't there. And all I could do was bury him. I know. So it's been a, it's been a hard few days. So I've, I've spent a lot of time in my quarters uh, trying to uh, sort of meditate and channel this new god that's been talking to me uh, to see if I can try and get some answers about what's going on. There we go. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, roll me a perception check, please. Okay. First use. Eight. <laughs> Brand new dice. <laughs> Shite. <laughs> um, yeah, you are you are deep in a meditation uh, in in your room. Um, you've been puffing on the lira leaf, and uh, you're not necessarily paying full attention to what's going on on the ship outside. Um, Wally, whereabouts are you at the moment? Where are you still wandering along the beaches, or are you...? I tend to stay near the ship, because frankly, why not? Um, but I'm not on the ship. Cool. Uh, roll me a perception check, please. Okay. That is an... 16, 13, 4, 20. Non-natural. Very perceptive bird. It's a very perceptive bird. As you are stood on the side of the docks or, or nearby where the ship is moored, um, you see a small contingent of um, guards mm -hmm. just make their way up the gantry onto the ship. This, and this is normal. This is, oh yeah, this is very normal. This, is, this doesn't look like it's uh, anything like dangerous. Oh. This looks like um, a summons. Oh, um, so I they really, make their I, way up. I very rarely get invited on those. I'll keep doing the backstroke. Um, Noggin, 
As you're on deck of the ship, you see a small contingent of guards walk past you. Um, and with them, there is a, um, a much more brightly coloured, wearing the, the multicoloured garb and the big, the big sun with the radiant feathers that uh, shows that this is a, uh, a follower of the god Oazo, who was uh, Ulmorn's god. Um, and he makes his way up to the captain's quarters and he knocks on the door and the captain opens the door looking tired and haggard. And um, they have a brief conversation. And uh, the captain sort of nods, and then uh, they leave. And a few minutes later, looking a little bit fresher and a little bit more dressed up, uh, the captain appears, and he stands on the deck, and he says to the assembled people below, he says, Right. Well. The queens would like to see us. I'm looking for a small party of people to make their way to the palace and find out what's going on. Uh, do I have any volunteers? At this point, I'm going to just peek my head out the door. Uh, what? <laughs> ah, Brother Jürgen. Oh. Nice, nice of you to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds, and I go back in and get dressed. Because I'm just out of hands. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs shaking off, just... I know, know the queen gives out shiny things. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Noggin, yes, uh, wonderful. Anyone, anyone else, anyone else? I'm just on the dock. What's going on? Uh, we need um, a small shore party to go, uh, go to the, uh, the palace of the queen. Um, and to, to she's, she's called for a large number of us. And, um, well, I just need to find out what's going on and, and what they need of us. I suppose. I've not been outside for a week. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, I'll go. Thank you, brother Jürgen. Just let me splash some water in my face and get some eye drops, possibly. <laughs> I am, I'm literally preening on the dock at the moment. <laughs> well, two seems enough. <laughs> You're going to walk past me, right? Yes. Good. <laughs> um, brother Jürgen, you, you go back into your cabin and you... You ready yourself, and uh, yeah, you make sure that you've put everything zips out. Zips my robe apart. <laughs> <laughs> zip, zip your robe up. Century zip. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> um, you've made sure that everything that was previously slightly on fire has been put out properly, because um, you don't you don't want to be that guy. Um, and then you make your way back onto the deck, and you find you find <laughs> waiting eagerly and patiently. Beside the uh, the gang tree down onto the dock, you find Noggin. Let's go! Ah, sure. Noggin, fantastic. Okay, uh, just before we go, right, keep your hands to yourself. All right? <laughs> okay? None of this, because I, 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 I'm not in the mood. All right? It's a cover for you. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> On we go. As you make your way down, down onto the docks, you see uh, stood on the <coughs> dockside, um, ostentatiously, like <laughs> puffing his chest out, um, basically trying to make as much noise and make himself as uh, visible as possible. You see, Wally. I give you a wave. Oh, hey! How you doing? <laughs> I just been ages. I just walked straight past them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the mood for this business, business this morning. No. Uh, I think today is going to be a cat day, so I <laughs> turn into a cat and curl up on her shoulders. <laughs> Lovely. It's a blue cat. Uh, cool. I'm a blue bird. Um, <laughs> of course. Um, so making your way out through the Docklands, um, through all of the areas where the uh, where the sort of warehouses are, and then you make your way up the long sloping pathway that uh, travels along the crest of the islands that gives the the area the Thundercrest uh, its name. And you make your way up uh, this road, and as you go along, you see these great plinths with um, these two statues on each one of a of a cleric and one of a, of a mariner or of some description or a captain uh -huh. um, that you've walked up before, or at least you and your party have walked up before. Um, and uh, you know it's known as the Way of the Faithful. Um, and from the ship you can see it, it stands out, stands out along the, on the skyline. Um, and as you make your way up to the top, you find yourself at the door of the palace and you're ushered inside. 
uh, and swiftly through all of the corridors and rooms uh, and past various levels of bureaucracy, you find yourself in the main throne room. And um, have any of you been into the throne room before? Never. No. I'm not sure. I, I know I, I interpreted something that was in the throne room, but I'm not sure if Noggin's actually been there. I met one of the... also our BSL I met one of the Queen's... Briefly, but that was just before we attacked a giant bird. So if it's that same throne, no. then yes. Or say we attack a big, a big bird attacked us uh, more than anything else. Yeah. Yes, this is the same I throne room. Um, this is the th <laughs> this is the throne room of Abilzim, ah, yes. the uh, the Queen of Luness, which is the the city that your ship ship is docked at. Um, she is a cleric of the of the moon, um, and she wears these long wispy white and blue robes and across her head is this huge um, crescent moon diadem. It almost looks like she's got these sort of horns that come out of her head because of the way it's worn. Yes, please. <laughs> um, I am enwrapped. What a beautiful woman. I'm just going to watch. Um, in she sat in her... <laughs> yeah. She is sat in her Wonder throne. <laughs> which sits in the centre of the room, and above her there is a small opening in the roof, um, and uh, she's look, she looks a little tired, because it's first thing in the morning. Um, and uh, everybody roll me an insight check. Oh, well, insight is a cat. 18. 12. Hang on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, insight is still me, so that is... Brian, you! Roll them twice. <laughs> 12 and 19. Well, you... Okay, so Wally definitely knows this. As an, inca as an inhabitant of this area, um, Wally is aware that because the queen follows a goddess of the moon, her court within the palace actually operates around a lunar cycle. Oh. So rather than running 9 to 5 mm -hmm. during the daytime, mm -hmm. um, it sort of shifts depending on how full the moon is, um, which does cause some problems. It's not always obvious what cycle the moon's in. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> um, so she looks a little tired. She looks like this is coming towards the end of her day. Oh. Um, more importantly, everybody roll me a perception check. Okay. 18! Mm, yes! At last. <laughs> um, Brother Jürgen and Wally, you notice, which is different from before, there is not just one throne in this room anymore. Two more quite important looking chairs have been pulled in and placed just off to the sides of the main throne room. And in those chairs sit two more women, both of whom bear a remarkable similarity in terms of their facial structure and their size and the way they hold themselves to Queen Abilzim, who sits in the middle. Um, Wally, uh -huh. you would recognise, or at least be vaguely aware, of who these two people are. These are the three queens, right? These are the three queens. Super, I know all about them. You have pulled, they have been pulled together. This is the first time that they have been seen all together in one room. Unfortunately, uh, I can't talk or relay this information, nor do I have any understanding of social graces, so this this is just three people in a room. You're just <laughs> staring at some queens. No, no, is, is, is the first one looking sad? You said that she was looking sad. Tired. Tired? Tired. I go and jump on her lap and let her stroke me. <laughs> um, as you land on Abilzim's lap, uh -huh. uh, she looks down and um, she sort of absent-mindedly pets I you. I give her the eyes! But not particularly uh, <laughs> looking for like not she's not she doesn't relish it it's more just um, not even the beautiful huge kitten eyes um Morgan, where did the girl come roll, from? roll roll <laughs> roll roll uh, it's persuasion <laughs> persuasion <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're trying to persuade Great. her to do but roll persuasion i'm trying to persuade her to love me could you be one of those people please that keeps your cat on elite i mean i know they're <laughs> i know they're weird but that this is a free range cat a ten. Um, yeah, she looks down, and after the first couple of strokes, she sort of gets into it a little bit more. Mm. But again, it's not. She's got. She's got stuff to do. Sure, I'm still and, in she, heaven and she's strength. tired. Oh. Um, and she looks out across the party of the two of you, and she sort of looks and nods, and then she spots your brother Jürgen, who she vaguely recognises, and she gives a sort of nod of slight deference of thanks, you know, 
Um, you are now part of the party, and your ship is um, is moored in her sh in, in her city, and you have been given great honors, um, and you have been incredibly helpful as a party and as a ship. Um, so, you know that having been called in front of the queen, it can only be for a positive reason. Um, okay. And at this point, she sort of gesticulates to her sister and her cousin sat beside her. And she says to the party and to the two of you, Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And she sort of looks across it's, to her. It's morning, trust me, it's the cat, morning. The cat and her lap <laughs> <laughs> This morning. It is a shame to have to bring you here after so many days of relaxation, following your hard work. It's been a lot of relaxation, your majesty. I am feeling very rested. I roll over and shove him a bed. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. No, I <laughs> ah. I'm glad that we find you in such fine fettle and good spirits. How can we help you, your majesty? Obviously, you have asked us here for a reason. and We on the horizon are more than happy to assist you, our friends and allies. It's wonderful to hear. Such oh, dear. <laughs> No, no. I will be brief. You have been on this island now for some time. You have seen how we live. You have seen our people. You have noticed, I presume, we are a little overcrowded. We have started to run out of space. Our success in agriculture and in our econ economy has allowed us to grow and our population to thrive against all odds. We have reached a point where, without causing too much damage, and at this point she looks across to, the, to, her, to her cousin, who is sat to her left-hand side, um, and she looks very similar, but instead of wearing fine robes, she's wearing this sort of coarse, homespun, um, undyed, um, like just a druidic me? Shawl. Uh, roll an insight check? Sure. Roll a detect druid check? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very specific skill. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a so I'll go alongside my find my keys uh, <laughs> skill. That's only, a, that's only an eight, I'm afraid. So. Um, you do not recognise her as a specifically a druid. Oh, um, what you have heard of her called um, around the islands is, um, her name is Elowen, uh -huh. um, and you hear people refer to her dismissively as Elowen the Heretic, oh. or the Heretic, depending on where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't go, do I stay there? And she looks across quite pointedly at uh, Abilzim, who's been doing the talking so far, and sort of cuts in over the top of her and says, yes, my cousin is quite right. We cannot continue to grow at this kind of pace. Uh, I have suggested that perhaps we should uh, undertake some kind of um, n n social decision making and, and, and reduce our population. Um, but uh, my sisters and my cousins are not particularly keen on this idea. Uh, for me, it is uncountenable, uncountenable that we should be able to uh, continue to chop down the forest and to, to, to desecrate and destroy this important and valuable resource that we find ourselves living within. Um, out of everything she's saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your Grace, uh, just to be clear, are you advocating just a bit of casual genocide? <laughs> uh, she bristles. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the if we're going to be down with that. I just yeah. want to put that out there. Absolutely not. We, I would, I would never consider such a thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my concern was more with uh, with reducing the ever growing population as it's growing, rather than reducing the population that currently exists. But my, my cousins here do not agree with my ideas, um, and they think it is much more important for us to reach out, to find new lands, and to uh, expand the borders of the Thundercrest Federation. Their argument is persuasive. I am uh, likely to agree with them. Plus, the opportunity to find new lands and to find an op uh, more, more places for us to expand means that we, as the strong druidic circle that we are, have more lands that we can 
tend to, and more plants and creatures that we can learn from. At this point, you notice... Uh, Romy, uh, Romy perception checks, everybody. Uh, 16 better, better. It's a 21. 22. On fire wow, everyone Cats is do see everything doing well. Fair, um, <laughs> two of them have been talking. The third one, sat to the right-hand side of Queen Abilzim, has been um, noticeably silent. And as you look across, uh, especially you, Brother Jürgen, you notice a sort of red-eyed, <laughs> slightly <laughs> sleepy quality to her. Um, she is here. <laughs> In person. <laughs> We've all been there. She is not necessarily <laughs> entirely here uh, in her mind. And at this point, from her, you just hear her just sort of go, Mmm, yes, I agree. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, mm, yeah, I agree. <laughs> do, we, do we know her name? Uh, I, I know her name in, in character. Your character knows her name, but cannot, cannot tell anyone who <laughs> it is. Can't talk. Um, Currently a cat. You, you've been on... Um, so... The members of the ship, when they first arrived in this island, uh-huh. Caldera, um, had to undertake a mission to save the lives of all three of these queens. Um, the first one that they saved uh, went by the name of Tabris. And Tabris is the queen of Greenglade Harbour, uh, which you've not really been to or investigated yet. Um, at this point, Abilzim... Is she looking a bit rough? She doesn't look... No, 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 no. She's looking... She's got a a broad smile on her face, Uh, and she's looking into the middle distance. I go over to her, she looks like fun. (laughs) Yeah. Taps over and just gives a little... Yeah, she strokes you harder than you've ever been stroked before. (laughs) Okay! She's just like... "Mm," Like... I go away! No, 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 no. I know when I know when I'm that sleepy. Biscuits and cheese tend to be the go-to. So maybe if I get a chance later on, I might see if I've got some just in my knapsack just to offer her. Wonderful. Um, at this point, Abilzim starts talking again, and she says, um, "Our population has expanded, and we have reached a critical level. We have our eyes on a nearby island, lush, green, verdant, large enough." for a small community to grow and for us to start to discover how we can expand our borders and learn how to cultivate new islands. We've had much success with this one, but each island is its own ecosystem in this world. We have sent out a few sorties, small parties, small settling groups, but to date, we have had no information back of even greater worry to us. Not only has information not flown back, but we have heard nothing of the settlers. And at this point, she sort of looks across the two of you and says, It is of great importance to us that this happens. We know that the crew of the Spirit of the Horizon are daring adventurers, skilled in investigation, in diplomacy, and, when needed, in battle. We feel this would be a perfect task for you to undertake. Your Majesty, you command vast armies. We are a research vessel. What makes you think we'll be any better at this than than your own forces? She nods and smiles and says, what we require is research. Damn. <laughs> um, I use the opportunity to turn back into me. Where are you when you turn back into you? So Stop setting her up. Not setting her up. I must be stress this very clearly. He doesn't wear clothes. <laughs> so there are, he's aware that not wearing clothes is not quite so acceptable, but damn be the rules. So um, I pop into existence sort of near her, sort of crouch down and, oh, oh, ah, oh, oh. I think that sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Where the bloody hell did you come from? I've been here the whole time. You think what? blue cats are normal? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. You're Wally, right? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, aptly named. Um, <laughs> just keep it, keep it down, yeah? I think it's a good idea. I think we should do it. I don't recall this being 
your decision. In absence of the captain, I'm the most senior member of the crew. Point! But I still think we should do it. <laughs> I'm with Wally. I think we should do it. This is not a democracy! Uh, <laughs> uh, your Majesty, uh, the captain is not here, so I must speak in his stead. He would obviously gladly offer our services, but... Um, and again, I'm trying to think what our captain would say. What's in it for us? <laughs> I agree. Shiny things. Shiny things. Noggin! Why do we need rewards? We're having fun! Yes, but if we can get something out of it, we will. Your Majesty, our stores are still low. We are still in the hunt for various supplies that we require to get back to our own place in time. If you could potentially ha help us with, with resources, either uh, physical resources or the means to acquire new resources, then that would be most useful, especially seeing as we are doing this uh, favor for you. Oh, Hang everything on. shiny. Why don't I check with the captain? <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Uh, I cast. <laughs> Mobile phone woodland. call? <laughs> no, I cast summon woodland beings. <laughs> <laughs> and summon a sprite, I think. Yes. A sprite. That's Got it. Cool. I, I genuinely thought you were texting that. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It was all in character. It was all in character. That's fine. Thank you. I summon a sprite. Sprites can fly 40 feet and they're tiny little pixie little things. Uh huh. And I go, hey, buddy. Can they talk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure? Uh, yes. <laughs> he says, Hey. <laughs> There's a ship in the harbor. It's kind of big. It's like bigger than all the other ships there. And it's got cannon on it. Um, can you go find the guy in charge of it and ask him if he's OK with us going to a magical island to research it for the queens? Like, yay or nay? Sure. Thanks, buddy. Just out the window. Give it like five minutes. Um, what do you do in the five minutes whilst you're waiting uh, for I'm your gonna sprites go to come to, back? I'm going to go up to, to, to uh, Queen Tavris and just be like, you alright there? <laughs> Her eyes lazily <laughs> follow across and then you get the impression that they are focusing on you for the very first time. Uh, I'm just going to go into my lab site. I'm going to bring out a little, uh, little uh, um, bundle of sort of cloth and then I was like, listen, I'll see you right. There we go. She and have some biscuits, she biscuits takes, and cheese. She takes the biscuits out and she sort of looks at them. <laughs> <laughs> looks at you. She breaks off a tiny bit of the corner of the biscuit and she starts going. I'm sort of leaning on the wall next to Elowen. Still completely new. Um, <laughs> Same Wait, as a bird though, right? You're not just... <laughs> <laughs> no, bird man. Oh, it's okay, that's fine. <laughs> Don't believe in clothes. Um, <laughs> looking across at her, looking across at the queen going, I think you and me are on a similar wavelength. Um, Abilzim has been in ha having a, a short conversation with, with Elowen. Um, mm -hmm. She tried to engage with Tabris, wasn't getting much out of her. So um, the two of them have been having a, a short, muttered conversation between the two. Mm -hmm. And um, Elowe, uh, Abilzim sorry, turns back to the group and whilst your sprites is off and says, I understand that you are seeking additional compensation for this. I have given you everything within my power. You have the freedom of my city. You are part of my uh, naval, our naval forces. You have the freedom of the cove and of of our ports. I have reached the end of what I feel I can give. You've given other people shiny robes. I know this. I've seen them on the ship. I want a shiny robe. And I'm tugging at her robe. You've got to stop getting attached to material things. It's not, it's not important. All this stuff doesn't matter. Your sure. Majesty, your Majesty uh, if we're going on this quest, um, I saw as we were coming in some of your guards marveled at some of their weaponry. Um, in particular, one of your guards had some very fine shields. Uh, now, my, my shield got left behind when we got uh, transported here. I could do with one. Uh, I don't suppose you could at least give me a loan of one for the next foreseeable future. I'll give you it back before we go. She, <laughs> she smiles and she says, 
It would be an honor for us to see a shield bearing the symbol of Zimian carried into battle. Um, I will, uh, on the way out, please speak to the captain of the guards and he will get one from nice. the armory for you. Thank you very much. Is that enough? Is that what you guys needed? Like a shield? Can we now I need that? a shield. I don't know what you needed, but I need a shield. I need for nothing, man. Come on, good. She looks across at the small person tugging at her. Looks down, rather, at the small person tugging at her robes and says, if a shiny cloak will seal the deal, a shiny cloak you shall have. With little moons. I like the little moons. Absolutely. We only make them like that. Um... As, uh, as well as this, at this point, um, Elowen also says, I may have something that may be of use to you as well. You have been searching for the constituent parts of something important to you. Uh, I, understa I understand you have been successful in finding them. How have, your, how have you been getting on with combining them? It's I think we just need to glue it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going gonna gonna to quickly put Noggin to the behind me. <laughs> stand in front of me. I just think we'll talk about this later. Collecting uh, stuff Your Majesty, we have managed to gather the constituent components that we require, but with the resources that we have on board ship, we our ship was never designed to, 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 to fabricate um, gunpowder on board. As a result of that, we are gun, having gunpowder yes. having, having some difficulty in, in putting it together. So there are some resources that I'm sure our uh, scientists and geologists on board would be, if you had them available to you, we could get a hold of. It would be fantastic. We have access to a laboratory, perhaps. Or we have many skilled elemental workers on the Silver Peak and within my domain on Silver Peak, I would be happy to give you their time, their energy, and their skills to help you create more of this gunpowder. Are you happy now? Yeah, I don't think we'll need to have their help. I'm sure that our, our scientists can craft it themselves. Just access to the equipment would be fine. I don't want her having access to how you make gunpowder. Why not? Because they don't know how to make gunpowder. What so is gunpowder? It's just, it's not, not nothing it really. Down. It's just, it's. Oh, you know, that sounds like fun. It's, it's, it's kind of sandwich. Um, you use it for magic, right? Like to go like, oh, magic, and now there's a sheep or something. At this point, your little sprite appears back in through the window, and it gets oh, right magic. up into your ear, and he says, Captain says, do whatever they said, get out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the captain said, do whatever they said, and get out of my room. So I think that's accurate. Sounds like the captain. Okay, your majesty, tell us where you need us to go and what you need us to do. There is an island off the coast, uh, a day's sail. It's known as Nubla. Well, at least to us it is. I do not know what it's known to the locals. I appreciate you taking on this task. Please, please note, we have heard rumours. There are tales that have made their way back to us of strange and dangerous animals. Creatures, strange and dangerous creatures on Island Nublar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference not everyone's going to get. Uh, <laughs> I'm a geek, of course I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> we can rely on you. Thank you so much. Please. When you have discovered what is going on, Return to us, and we will make sure that you have everything that you need and all of the things that we have discussed. A shiny cloak. Shiny cloak. Shiny. With moons with on moons it. moons on it. No problem. Deal. And she reaches out her long <laughs> hand and sort of very gently, and it's almost like it's not there, like gently just sort of shakes it. I grab it's it furiously. Uh, furious shaking. <laughs> You're more than welcome, honey. More than welcome. Okay. Uh, Let's get going. I will right still on my shoulder because it lasts an hour. With a, with a distinctly audible sigh, <laughs> I will simply just put my staff in front of me, nod, and uh, usher these two out. And on the way to the guard, on the way past, get to the guard saying, before we go, this, please, go fetch me one. A nice one, thank you. A big one. Better than this, because this, this shield your pants. Oh, a bigger one, you know, the good stuff, the stuff you keep at the back. Thank you. 
Uh, you, yeah, you, they come back uh, carrying something that looks a little bit like that. Yay! <laughs> big, great big paladin type shield with a, in it the middle of it. Design, so long as it's moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the middle of it is this nice. thin crescent moon on its base, and then all around it are the full moon placed on it. Um, I mean, how do you feel about carrying the symbol of a different deity? Well, to be honest, I've kind of got some god issues happening at the moment anyway. I don't really know. Um, you know who it is that's talking to me. Just that anyway, Lyra's somewhere else. You know, you know, and if you want to say, you know, it doesn't count if you're in a different area code. Uh, so, um, <laughs> um, uh, so at this point, I'm just sort of coming to to coming to the acceptance that 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 that, uh, that I'll, I'll get back to to, to Lyra when we get home. I give a ridiculously ostentatious bow, going, "Your worshipfulness is, is, is and walk. Still nude. So what does the shield do to my armor class? It adds two to it. Yes. Um, and it looks cool. It does. It's very nice. Um, wonderful. You make your way back out of the temple, uh, down through the town, um, and along the, the shoreline, uh, and back to the ship. Um, presumably, you relay all of this information to the captain, who uh, informs the rest of the crew to ready the sails and to ready the ship for departure, uh, and the ship uh, after an hour or so, sails off out of the harbour uh, at least oh, in the direction of, uh, you assume, where the island is. Um, it's going to take you about a day, which means you've got some time Wait. to do uh, anything that you would like to do on board the ship, to have any conversations. Um, is there anything specifically that Brother Jürgen, Noggin or Wally would like to achieve um, in that in that day? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you first. Oh, sure, okay. I, I need to have a word with the captain, because the captain and I haven't had a chat in a wee while. So I'm going to go up to have a little... Yes? I go in. Is he sober? He looks sober. He looks. Okay. He still looks very tired. Though. Yeah, very tired, okay. Just because usually I have to... He's usually hungover, so I have to heal him before we can have a conversation. <laughs> um, uh, afternoon, captain. Ah. Uh. Yes, af afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know it's been a busy one. Captain, I just need to have a quick word with you a little bit. Um, it's been a little while since we've chatted. Um, yes, it has. So, you'll recall a few days ago, as I'm sure everybody else did, that we buried one of our own. Um, he looks sad, and his yeah. eyes drop, and he says... Uh, I, I don't know what you know much about my past captain before we came here, but I am a cleric of joy. I spent my days going to pubs and going to taverns and organizing parties and basically making sure that everybody was happy and having a good time. And in that time, I never had to perform a funeral. I never had to bury anyone. Do you know how many people have buried since we've come here, Captain? Three? 127. There's the crew members, and there was that village that I had to bury half of them. I've had to bury 127 people, Captain. And I had to bury my friend the other day. And it's not made me feel particularly joyous. So it got me to thinking. I think the crew is having a hard time. I so... It's time I got back to doing what I do best. And that's spreading a little joy. So with your permission, Captain, seeing as you've never given me a promotion, you promote everybody else around right <laughs> here, by the way, I would like to volunteer as the ship's morale officer. And I've got some ideas I'd like to run past you to try and improve morale on board ship. He, he, he looks at you. He's taken in everything you've said, and um, it's hit home. It's hit hard, actually. Um, He's very aware. He's been going through a lot of problems himself and uh, the loss of uh, a high-ranking member of his crew. Um, when you say, oh, you've never promoted you, he sort of looks wistfully at you and sort of think in this kind of... It's... I wasn't aware you were interested in a promotion. <laughs> uh, as we a, all as a title, Captain. As a, as a civilian on board this ship, I, I felt it was... Um, difficult to promote civilians. That really is the job of the master, to 
to change the way that the crew is set up. However, I am intrigued by your suggestion. Please, tell me more. Okay, so, <clears throat> first one I think you'll love. I think uh, on, a, on, a, on a Thursday, I think we have happy hour. Oh, God. <laughs> from maybe, you know, five till seven, um, all together on the deck. Um, happy I spoke hour. to Jeremy, 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 the, the, the barista. You recall Jeremy the barista? Oh, and, Jeremy. Uh, he Jeremy. makes a mean latte. And Muir, <laughs> and Muir the, the, the sandwich boy. And I'm thinking we could maybe set up a little stall on board deck. Uh, for coffees and sandwiches, just when the crew are feeling a little bit peckish. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, I suggest you speak to uh, Potassium Nitrate, I believe he's calling himself now. Uh, you used to know him as Plumage. Oh, yes. Plumage, he, bird. He's, yeah. changed, he's changed his name two or three times since we got okay. here. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking shuffleboard tournaments. Uh, I'm thinking uh, Naked Tuesday. <laughs> At that point, he's like... I think that may be a step too far. Okay. There are there are there are smaller people on board the ship. They don't need to be wandering around with your <clears throat> at eye height. So, so you're not going to be interested in Orgy Friday then. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> he grins <laughs> and says, "Run that one past me again in a few weeks." Um. But, uh, and, you know, and also, I mean, I've spent a lot of time, obviously, in my, cap in my cabin. Um, Aya, who, uh, is who you recently um, promoted to our uh, chief scout as well, she's hung out with me quite a bit, and, she, you know, we've, you know, she uh, acquired some things that I found useful, and the two of us enjoyed that, so I thought I would open up my cabin to people on a, of an evening if they want to come and share the joy that I am spreading as well. That is wonderful news. We have been looking for an officer's mess. If you are willing to... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I'm not getting into a whole kind of, you know, my room all of a sudden become some kind of combined kitchen, living room situation. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just, at, it's at just an Edinburgh flat. <laughs> at which point he gestures around his cabin and you notice that there is a tiny cot, <laughs> and he's not a small man. <laughs> and then everywhere you look, there are there's like office, kitchen, <laughs> bedroom, okay. washing. Like it's not a sm it's not a big room. Okay. The ca even the captain's quarters are tiny, cramped, and uh, filled. Listen, okay, fair enough. I, everyone has to make sacrifices. As long as it's you know, house rules. People get out when you know it's bedtime. Could be four in the morning. I don't mind. <laughs> But, uh, but I think it's important, Captain, and that's what I'd like to do for the crew. I feel it's only my, 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 due, my due duty to try and do that because, you know, we're far away from home, Captain. Things are hard enough as it is. It's time to bring a little bit of levity into things because there's only so long that people can work at this level of stress. Very good, yes. Uh, I think all of the things, apart from Orgy Fridays and Naked Thursdays, uh, are, are, are... Tuesdays, Tuesdays. Tuesdays. It's uh, happy hour was Thursday. Um, <laughs> I've uh, got it written down. I've combo. made a schedule. I, I've Wait till you see what's happening combo. on a Sunday. <laughs> I've made a few notes. Um, I think they're very good. And uh, yes, let's, let's try them out, starting this week. Uh, we'll... Um, we don't have the necessary things on board to, uh, to run the shuffleboard competition, but I'm sure when we get back to the Troquen Caldera, we can speak and see whether we can find the right things. But snacks and coffee stands and happy hour and, uh, and the officer's mess in your room, absolutely great ideas. Let's try those. Aye, aye, Captain. May I? Yes, I am done. As you open the door, uh, Chancey, the captain's pet griffin, yeah. is swooping around flying around the ship, um, either chasing or being chased, bit of give and take, <laughs> by a slightly larger griffin with blue wings, um, chasing them around, having sort of joyfully dive bombing the deck and floating around, and evidence of fun and joy and happiness, just and all the crew are enjoying watching this little display. The captain leans out of the, the window and sort of looks up in the sky and says, Chansey, 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 playtime's over, come in. It's time for your lessons. <laughs> and the griffin <laughs> and sort of dives down and drops down onto the deck beside it and sort of slowly makes its way into the into the cabin. Are you in your cabin? Yeah. Can um, be on deck? I can be on deck. Cool. cool. <laughs> um, I <laughs> back into being me um, on deck and 
where are you? So what I want to be doing mm. is I want to be tinkering and making new things with all of the cogs and springs that I have collected. Yep. From that uh, strange world where everything was clockwork. Yep. Um, so I, you know, my cabin, it's a bit too full. I've just got shiny things everywhere. So I, I can't really... Look at these things. <laughs> Aren't they neat? <laughs> <laughs> it's copy <laughs> much space in there so I've moved up onto the deck I've set myself up a little little studio and I am creating I want to create one of those little robot things oh um, like a clanker a clanker I want to create a clanker but I want it to dance a dancing clanker yes. wonderful um yeah you're gonna need to roll me a hmm, what is that gonna be it's probably gonna be a dexterity roll Good. I think probably just just straight dexterity um okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, you put it together and it all looks perfect and wonderful and then you wind it up <laughs> and it, it like it starts to boogie <laughs> and then poof, and it just sort of pa- tangs apart and an arm po- and the head bongs out and bongs <laughs> to the side. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna probably need to practice it and to work on it a little bit longer, but um, yeah, it won't be long. Okay. It won't be long. Um, right. we keep Keep trying. I, I land next to her and um, I'm not good with this. Okay. I'm sorry your friend's dead. <laughs> really sorry. I, I, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. I just, you know, I was there and, and I saw and, and I'm sorry and um, I, I don't know how to behave in these situations, so I'm going to keep talking. That works. Okay. Okay. Can, can you help me with this? Can I? Yeah. I mean, you lived on the world where these clankers were, you know. I mean, it's, it's not my specialism, but I can give it a go. Um, I want it to do? Roll, um, well, it depends. Are you going to help make it, or are you going to aid Noggin to make it? I think, I think I'd have a go myself first. Just roll a straight dexterity. Straight dexterity. Ten. Um, this one... Continues. You make it. You pull it all back together again. Uh, you wind it back up. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts to unwind. It starts to dance, and then it kind of. Uh, and then there's a bang inside the mechanism, and it just sort of drops. Um, well, it's a project. Yeah. At this you point, you hear from above, from the crow's nest, land ho! And the captain pops his head and says, yes, very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Perfectly good enough. Could have just shouted it in a normal voice, couldn't you? <laughs> um, uh, you look over the side of the ship and you see, coming towards you in the distance, you see a large island. A- even from this point, uh, far away, it is densely overgrown, covered in greenery. The trees are thick. Um, uh, a tall, craggy peak reaches out from the centre of the island and uh, as you make your way closer to it uh, there is a hushed conversation on board the deck and uh, people are looking out, peering around. Um, A voice comes down from the top of the the crow's nest. Captain, I I can't see anywhere for us to land. There's no obvious inlets or ports or, or anything. I think we're going to have to moor up here, Captain, and, and send a smaller boat. Ugh. I can help with that. I'm good with water. I'm not. <laughs> Bloody water. Roll me a perception <coughs> check. Um, uh, all of us or? Everybody, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 18. Seven. <laughs> Aggressively better. <laughs> it's warm <laughs> enough. Brother Jürgen, you look out across it and you spot in the distance a what looks like a very small beachhead. Um... Where, where a smaller boat would be able to, to land. Captain, there's a small landing area. Up, uh, we might be able to get one boat on it. Um, permission to take a landing party aboard, Captain. <laughs> permission granted. Uh. And that's where we're going to end this.
Uh, you can also buy player tickets and get involved in the game yourself. Um, and this is just now a chance for a couple of cheeky plugs from some of the people at the table. Yeah, you go first, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. So I am the uh, host of a comedy panel game show called Imaginary Porno Charades, uh, which is a show that does literally exactly what it says on the tin. It's charades of titles to made up porn films. Uh, we've got different guests every night from all across the festival. Uh, tonight we have Christian Talbot, Rosie Holt, uh, Nikki Wilkinson from the Cagoules, and Dan Atfield. Uh, so a fantastic guest list and uh, yeah, really good fun. Uh, come along, 11 o'clock uh, at uh, in the evening, fun enough, uh, <laughs> at uh, Sweet Grass Market. Uh, tell your friends. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a freelance <coughs> PR, so I work on a lot of shows up here. Uh, so I'm going to pick one for today. And that's a show called Harry, which is on at uh, 20 past midday, around then, uh, at Underbelly. And it is about two... It's about going through university, and especially an obsession with One Direction. So you guys seem the perfect target. <laughs> <laughs> like I've nailed the choice of show. Oh my God, Harry, I love you! <laughs> the nice thing is that I went in as a person who thinks One Direction are Drek, and went, mm. and it's actually more about uh, being women growing up in university and how tough it is, and how tough it is to go to university and uh, deal with life and things happening all around you. It's very nice. It's well worth a look. I recommend it heartily. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you again for coming. We've now got a quick turnaround to our next tower, uh, so it's good start the way you came in and have a lovely day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, stream. Bye. Bye.